Okay, let's see. This book has an entire chapter entitled Adam and Eve. So we're gonna get some Adam and Eve jokes <laughs> over the next, <laughs> over the next, uh, however long they last. Let's just say that, however long they last. Okay, so here we go. This one's not really a joke, but it's, it, it, it's something to think about. History has recorded only one indispensable man, Adam. Without him, we would have no one. Good morning, Margaret. It's great to have you here. Good morning, Tammy. This one is funny. After the fall in the Garden of Eden, Adam was walking with his sons, Cain and Abel. They passed by the ruins of the garden. One of the boys asked, what's that? Adam replied, boys, that's where your mother ate us out of house and home. Yeah, but you ate the apple too. And then you blamed her for your decision. Nah. Anyway, I won't get into that here. Good morning, Mikey. It's great to have you with us. Good morning, friends. This is the Gospel of Joy. I am the Reverend Josh Knappenberger, the pastor of laughter, the cleric of comedy. And it is, it is a blessing to have each one of you here with us. I hope that today you get enough laughs to make you want to come back tomorrow but if not then i hope to give you enough laughs to get through today and you know um i hope those things whether you're here for your first time or your 149th i think it's 149th we're almost to 150. <laughs> i didn't even know if i was going to do number two and we're up to number 150. all right you can don't forget to comment, like, sh share, and tag your friends in this video. And if you're on YouTube, comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. All those things help these videos get out to more people. We try to do that because joy and laughter doesn't do much good if it doesn't go anywhere. So we try to get it out to more people so we can get the jokes and the joy and the laughter out to people. Also, in front of St. James UCC on 15th Street in Allentown, uh, we have our book box lending library for children. It is meant to be an exchange, so don't forget, if you take a book, try and leave a book. It's the way we keep the ministry going. We are glad to do the ministry for the community, and it is a joy for us. But uh, it's there, so don't forget to stop by. I got my buddies with me. Now these buddies are buddies of <laughs> are buddies of another buddy that I'm going to show you tomorrow. All right. Well, this one buddy. I show. I'll show you the one I showed yesterday. This is the one I showed yesterday. The robot dog named Ravage. In the movie, he transforms and he transforms from a missile that's shot from a satellite to Earth. So this is Ravage. He's got guns on his back, spiky tail. And today we are looking at Laserbeak. He is a vulture who um, is like a messenger, and he transfer. He in the movie he actually transforms into a couple different things. He transforms into a computer, a computer screen, and he transforms into a pink, smaller version of Bumblebee. Uh, and he's talking to a little girl, but he's a bad guy. He's trying to find out where the girl's daddy is because he's gonna. Cause he wants to do some, some bad guy things to the daddy. So this is Laserbeak. He's got a big wingspan, and he's a lot of fun. And you can pose him really well. His head goes down and up, and his legs move, and his wings can do this. But he's a very, very well detailed figure. Anyway, that's enough of my buddies. Uh, they are here for me, but I know you like seeing them, so there they are. All right, the scripture reading is in the description for this morning. And, um, people of God, gather around and hear the word of the Lord. Now, remember yesterday, Jesus was talking to a crowd. And today, 
we're going to talk about what the disciples said that the Pharisees said. So this is third-hand information, but we're going to talk about uh, what Jesus said to the disciples after talking to the crowd. And while you're looking for Matthew chapter 15, verses 12 through 13, I have another Adam and Eve joke for you. Well, two of them. Two more Adam and Eve jokes for you. Let's see what we got. What a good thing Adam had going when he said something, but he knew nobody had said it, but I'd said it before. <laughs> Sunday school teacher, what evidence is there in the Bible that Adam and Eve were noisy? Boy, they raised Cain. My grandfather had a cane for a while, and I'd pick it up and he'd say, You're raising Cain. Oh, he was a funny guy. My pop up. All right. So, people of God gather around. Hear the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 15, verses 12 through 13. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. This is the reading of God's holy word. May God bless the reading, hearing, and living of God's holy word as we walk through this time of darkness with it as a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Good morning, Stefa. It's great to have you with us. Grace, mercy, and peace bring to you from the one who was and the one who is the one who is to come our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when I started airborne school in Georgia in February of 2002 a long time ago my class had 526 people in it men and women and three weeks later we gradu graduated with 411 airborne troopers not everyone made it through the training or, su or survived all the jumps without injuries. Nobody died, but injuries led people to not being able to complete the training requirements. Some people just didn't make it. Some people quit throughout. Now, in our scripture this morning, Jesus, Jesus has been teaching controversial things like it's not what you eat that defiles is what you say that defiles doesn't sit well with the Pharisees they don't like it now this is a common dynamic in the Gospels Jesus preaches the Pharisees grumble Jesus shuts them down and the Pharisees grumble even more the Pharisees took offense to Jesus his preachings Jesus says what God has not planted will be plucked up it will be uprooted. What God has not planted. Translation, the Pharisees might not make it to eternal life. Now, Jesus is most of the time known to be loving, and it is loving to remind people of the truth. Now, I don't think Je Jesus was necessarily talking about the Pharisees themselves but talking about the ideas that they had planted. The people are of God, but sometimes what they think and what they say might not be. Pharisees have to be careful because if they cling to their ideas and their beliefs and their feeling of being offended, they might be uprooted with those beliefs and thrown out and it will be too late to save them. Jesus gives a warning to his disciples. If you proclaim to believe in something, be sure that it is of God. How do we know it's of God? Well, Jesus leads to the Holy Spirit, which calls us into that which God calls us to be and believe. Ask Jesus. 
and you will find your way. And that is why, whether we live or whether we die, we belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, I got some jokes here for us. Let's see what we got for the jokes. We're still on the parsonage jokes. Okay, this one's entitled Punishment. Dad, you wouldn't punish me for something I didn't do, would you? Why, of course not. The son replies, Good, I didn't do my homework. The dad says, Well, son, remember I'm speaking and spanking you because I love you. The son says, I sure wish I was big enough to return your love. <laughs> oh, those are pretty harsh. Anyway, the Easter dress. The poor country parson was livid when he confronted his wife with the receipt for a $250 dress she had bought. How could you do this? he exclaimed. I don't know. I was standing in the store looking at the dress. Then I found myself trying it on. It was like the devil was whispering to me. Wow, you look great in that dress. You should buy it. Well, the husband persisted, you know how to deal with the, with the tempter. Just tell him, get behind me, Satan. I did, replied his wife. But then he said, hey, it looks great from back here, too. <laughs> Don't forget to comment on which joke you like the best this morning. That one was pretty good. That one was pretty good. Okay. This one's entitled Debugging. A couple honeymooned at the Watergate Hotel in Washington, D.C. The bride was concerned that the room was bugged. But the groom said, don't worry, I'll check. So he looked behind the drapes, behind the pictures, and under the rug. There he found a disc with four screws, unscrewed them, and threw them and the disc out the window. The next morning, the hotel manager asked, How was your stay? How was your room? How was the service? Why all these questions, asked the groom. Well, explained the manager. People in the room under you complained of the chandelier falling on them. Yeah, be careful how you modify your uh, your hotel room. That's um can be dangerous. <laughs> but going to the Watergate Hotel, I could um I could sympathize. A newly married couple returned from their honeymoon. As they got off the plane at the crowded airport, the bride said, "Darling, let's make the people think that we have been married a long time." Okay, dear, said the husband, you carry the bags. <laughs> it's either that or walk in bickering. Who's in control is the title of this one. A husband was advised by a psychiatrist to assert himself. You don't have to let your wife henpeck you. Go home and show her you are the boss. This one's not going to end well. A husband, uh, of course, the husband took the, the doctor's advice. He hopped on, he hopped in his car and rushed home. There he slammed the door, shook his fist in his wife's face and growled, Woman, from now on, you're taking orders from me. I want my supper right now, and when you get it on the table, go upstairs and lay out my best clothes. I'm going out with the boys, and you are going to stay home where you belong. <laughs> and here's another thing. Do you know who's going to comb my hair? adjust my pants, then tie my own bow tie? I certainly do, said the wife calmly without even looking up. The Undertaker. Oh, we gotta be careful. This one's entitled Male Female. Being silent is good. Being silent is good. Others think you are listening. 
Well said, A Dangerous Slip is the title of this one. Well said, Eric, I ran afoul of one of those questions women ask. Now I'm in deep trouble at home. What kind of question? Asked Tom. My wife asked me if I would still love her if she was old, fat, and ugly. That's easy, said Tom. You just say, of course you will. Of course I will. Yeah, that's easy for you to say. What I said was, of course I do. Oh, boy. Your Honor, my wife is just being ridiculous. Most men would love to have a husband who still believes in chivalry. And I was only opening the door for her out of chivalry. Mrs. Smith replied the judge, I am granting the divorce. I cannot believe chivalry was the motivation while driving 65 miles per hour. This next one's entitled Pain Relief. A man entered a drugstore and asked the pharmacist for a cure for the hiccups. The pharmacist immediately reached out, slapped him across the face. What'd you do that for? asked the man angrily. Well, you don't have the hiccups anymore, do you? No, replied the man, but my wife in the car still does. Never satisfied. A prisoner escaped from the local prison. His escape was the lead news item on the 6 o'clock news, and all the stations kept interrupting their programming to report on the hunt. Because of the high level of, of hunting, the prisoner was forced to work his way home slowly by taking side streets and dark alleys. Finally, he crept up to his house and rang the doorbell. His wife immediately opened the door and greeted him with, Where have you been? You escaped six hours ago. You would think that the cops would be surrounding his house, but they do the best they can, I suppose. And I must say, I really appreciate police officers, especially in this time. All right, I do have a cartoon for you, but keep in mind, the cartoons I found are all Christmas cartoons. So if you hear a cartoon, it may be out of season, but I'm going to show them anyway because they're what I got. And I may start doing some Christmas jokes too because that's all I got left in the Christmas versions of the Joyful Noise Christmas issues. All right, anyway, we have the, the little girl talking to one of the boys with the Christmas tree in the background, and she says, tomorrow night they'll all sing... Auld Lang Syne. That's the New Year's Carol. The New Year's Eve Carol. All right. Thank you for joining us. That's all I have for you. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for sending us Jesus who helps us to know whether the path we are going down is of God or of not. Help us to follow you that we may not get plucked up and thrown out, but that we may have life eternal. We ask these things in your name. Amen. All right. Keep laughing. Keep healthy. Don't forget to do one thing every day that brings you joy. I don't care what it is. Find it and do it. And I will be here on Saturday with a children's message. Sunday with a um, Sunday with communion. So don't forget your bread, your juice, your water, your wine. I got to remember my bread too. I <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I will be here every morning at 1030 for the foreseeable future. Now may God keep you in the stitches of laughter and love today, tomorrow, and into eternal life. Amen. God bless. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>